Today we are going to talk about millipede and kangaroo and grasshopper. Um, to penalize the surface, we can do that easily in grasshopper through subdividing the surface and creating three point surface. However, in many of the cases, you can see they create a lot of different size of triangles, a very small one to some really big ones. So in this exercise, we are trying to redistribute the points through kangaroo to find um, triangulation in more similar sizes. So in the script, we start with sampling points and then we set up two forces. First, the repelling force between UV points and second one, the constraint to surface. We run through the kangaroo physics and to visualize this, we can use circles and we will stimulate it once now. So you can see the circles are trying to find an optimal distribution along the surface. So further to that, we will go for Milipi to find an uh, optimized size for the truss. In this case, we have to set up the two points of support. As to visualize the space frame. So in here we, we set up the material properties, the support types, and we run through the software and we eventually we can get a truss in different sizes. So we will go through the script step by step. The first step is to obtain the UV sampling points. Divide surface. With that, we have to delete all the duplicated points. Through this, we will set up the first force, the repairing force between all the points. You can see this interconnect all the points together and springs from line in kangaroo. So we have to set up a rest lane for the points to settle. It is also the upper cutoff. So you can see this become our first force. The second one is the constraint to the surface. We can use pool to surface in kangaroo. The constraint surface and our UV points. So here we get the two forces and we can run the kangaroo physics. We have to flatten the two forces. So you can see the points are trying to find an even distribution but it's not along the surface so we have to find the closest point from the surface so 
show to visualize we can draw circles also as a modeling technique we can array components along the surface in this case we can use the rest length as the radius for the circles and the normals we have to evaluate points from the surface so here we get the normals for the circles so you can see the points are constrained to the surface so we can run through again So so further to that we can obtain triangle mesh from the points for Delaunay mesh In Delaunay mesh it keeps the data UV points and we can recreate the mesh decomposing it mesh the, the vertex the face from the Delaunay mesh and we can use refibbed faces polyline to get the outline of these meshes so using planar surface we can create a triangulated panels for modeling use so for the next part I will pass to he Helen to explain the Miller P okay then we will continue with the Miller P and to continue, we will use the lines from the kangaroo and the river birds. So we will explore them, flatten them, flatten, and then we can get the curves. Okay. So at the moment, we can hide the result from river bird first. Okay. Okay, then to continue with Millipede to start, we have two major components. One is uh, frame curves, and the frame curves will define the material and the cross section of the structure. And the second major component is the FD point support, and this is to define the point of the low bearing, the low bearing point in the structure, and yes okay and we use the curves from the river bird and plug into here and then we will also use material to define the material of the curves so we can uh, right click and then you can choose different material and this time we use steel and then we cut this one to find the cross section um, maybe we can choose eye beam for now and then plug into CS okay and for the point support um, because we have to make sure the point support the input here are the actual loading point at the same loading point of this um, output from Weaver so what I do is I will um, bake this one and then I will get um, I will do the two points exactly from here and I will use the uh, lowest point lowest two lowest point here as the structural loading points 
and I delete the mesh lines. Okay. Okay, then I will define the point. Well, set multiple points. This one and that one. Okay. And then input it to the FD point support. And then we have another um, button called stock support is to define the ground condition of these two points and we can control it by using the two go button and then And um, at, uh, as I plug in this sex to go button in this, this sex input here, we can change the degree of freedom uh, that affects this to the point. So you can see, and uh, it may change the um, rotation and the how the point touch the ground. And this time we will use this one. Okay, and then plug into here, and this represents how our object is standing on a horizontal plane, right? Okay, and then we will use a major component called System Builder to combine all this information together. And this System Builder will not do the analysis, but just for combining the information from the frame curves and the FE point support. Okay. And then we will use solver, FE solver, which is also a major component for analyzing the finite element. And we have a control here called SWC, self weight coefficient. And this control the value and the amount, um, how the self weight is um, applied into the calculation of the structure. So the higher the value that is, and the more is the self weight is applied into the structure. So we can set it to one here, plug it here. Okay. And then. To, as a final step, we have to visualize um, our analysis. We do this frame visualization, plugging the FE here, okay, and uh, we have to turn it true here, okay. And this is the degree of deflection, okay, I will type the value first. I will use a division and a number slider into here. And use the over here. Okay. And I will use another slider is plugged into the degree of inflation here. Okay. There it close the mesh and then and another slider is for the um, length of subdivision of each element so this is the preciseness of the uh, visualization okay um, I can also choose the color of the preview and uh, I would like to use Maybe um, a blue color. Okay. Okay. And then I'll elaborate this. Okay. And um, this is the degree of the exaggeration of um, the deflection. And so we can set a high value like 30. We set it to zero first, and then you can see 
um, maybe not. Maybe a little bit. Okay. The higher the value is, the more is the degree of the deflection um, of the um, visualization. Okay. And this is the degree of inflation. And the figure, the meshes, represent um, to optimize the structural skeleton. How it is? And this one, the smaller the value is, the higher is the precision of the representation. So maybe we can choose uh, one minor. Okay. And okay. We can also change the color by choosing different um, types of analysis. We want to do like deflection and uh, torsion and uh, shearing force and stress. Okay, so. Um, this will be the end of our tutorial. Thank you.